So first, we need to be focused on talent man management and talent growth writ large. So we need to be changing the way in which we are structuring education from the earliest ages onward to make sure that we are building the workforce of tomorrow. And we have to stop thinking about things just as public and private and recognize that the future of the world depends on having individuals who understand technology, who understand its power, also understand the risks that it brings. Now how do we as government make sure that we're able to access that talent? Well, in some ways it's easy because we are tackling some of the biggest problems. That we know that individuals are moving to cities at a rapid pace, unprecedented in human history. And so we have an opportunity in public service to shape our future, to tackle those big problems, to leverage technology for public good. We think that is very appealing. We know that the, the young workforce is not simply interested in making money. They're interested in having a global impact and impacting people's lives. And in government, we provide that opportunity. We provide economic stability, a job that you can enter and you can stay working with government for a decade, two decades, but also you can do things that are uniquely changing the world today. That you know, a standard government job posting does not look very attractive, right? We need to be posting jobs on social media. We have to not only explain the technical details about what are the civil service requirements and things like that, but we have to actually tell the story of the work that we are doing. When you understand the details, the big picture impact that you have in government, that's a very appealing job to have. Um, but it isn't always relayed in the traditional sort of job posting documents and bureaucratic processes. So we have to do a good job at storytelling the narrative. We have to get the word out. That means posting in all different types of you know, platforms. It means leveraging tools like LinkedIn and online job postings. We can't simply expect that individuals will come to government to see what's available. We have to push that information out to the broadest audience possible. So in terms of skills, problem solve. It's all about problem solving and creative thinking. That technology can only take us so far that you have to also be creative. And it's when the magic happens when you have creativity that meets sort of technological engineering type of problem solving thinking. And so we're after both, right? We do not want to have you know, a, we want to have diversity of perspectives in government administrations. We don't want to have a one-sided administration. So we're looking for people that are big thinkers, that understand the holistic view of what's happening in society today, but also are practical, that are about outcomes and getting things done, right? And so when you think about the millennial generation, this is uh, a generation that is very big picture in its perspective. Um, they grew up on the internet. They have a global view that is unprecedented, right? That they're thinking about things in the broadest way. They have access to unlimited information and that government provides such a unique opportunity for them because government was created at the end of the day to solve broad social problems that an individual or a business couldn't do on their own, right? And so we think it's the perfect platform for individuals with global thinking. Um, but you need to make sure that folks understand how government works, right? Um, that is something that in some ways you only learn on the job, but it means that the types of individuals that we're looking for are people who are not deterred by challenges, that they figure out how to get things done, how to work around barriers as they come. Those really big picture thinking problem solvers are the future workforce for government. Those are the individuals that are going to change the world. So when we think about smart cities, we are very conscious of the fact that as we introduce new technologies, we may in fact be improving, er, increasing the digital divide. And what I mean by that is that there are segments of New York City that are in some ways pulling for technology that they're early adopters and they are very keen to see their communities instrumented with new technologies. And there are other parts of the city that are in some ways pushing back, perhaps because of uh, histories of abuses by government and corporations and uh, technology being used more as for a surveillance 
uh, means and things like that. So a lot of our strategies are making sure that as we roll out technologies that we are putting public safety privacy, transparency front and center. So we've rolled out guidelines for the Internet of Things to make sure that we're being responsible, sustainable uh, in, our, in our deployment of these technologies. We also have living labs where we engage directly with communities in identifying the problems. And we run a lot of problem-based challenges where we put out challenges that we face and we look for the broad community, whether it be the private sector, academia, to put forward the best ideas. So that broad approach that we're taking that holistic vision for how a smart city progresses and evolves in the future is what we've been recognized for and what we're in some ways seeing being replicated around the world. We are, as government, taking proactive steps to make sure that these technologies are reaching the communities where they're needed most. And there's a lot of hard work that's involved in that. So we're working in communities like Brownsville, Brooklyn. This is a neighborhood that has the highest concentration of public housing in all of North America. If you're born in Brownsville, your life expectancy is 11 years less than if you were born in Lower Manhattan. And when you engage in a community like that, it is a very difficult process to help understand the cost-benefit analysis that comes with these new technologies. Because they can bring enormous opportunity, but you also have to be thinking about what does it mean for privacy. And that when we engage in those difficult discussions, uh, we bring the advocacy groups to the table, we bring the community leaders, and we really think about what is the potential here and, and how can we be setting appropriate rules. Then you get to that sort of proactive trust building that enables us to launch challenges like we're doing right now in Brownsville. We have two challenges that are active where one we're looking at how could we advance zero waste goals in public housing. Um, how can we sort of leverage new technologies to help think about incentivizing uh, people to do recycling? Or how can we activate nighttime spaces to create a sort of more vibrant atmosphere on streets and create economic opportunity? If you're able to bring all of the key stakeholders to the table and have that real discussion about what are the opportunities and what are the risks, then you can break three, free of, uh, in some ways, these preconceptions and these histories um, that, that folks have that are barriers. And we begin to move towards a future where all communities recognize how they can adopt technologies to improve their quality of life, and we begin to narrow that divide. I think that we are entering a new age of uh, public servants now, right? In many ways, the, the civil servants of yesteryear were uh, traditional bureaucrats whose job was, was to go in and, and follow the rules, right? To think about what are the processes that we can create to, in some ways, manage chaos, right? Um, today, with the rapid advancement of technology, Manning, managing chaos means something very different. It means being entrepreneurial and, and being able to be iterative and to constantly think up new ideas and how that we can evolve as government. It's not about being rigid in your thinking and creating structures um, that will last forever because the, with technological change, things are changing so rapidly. We can't be rigid anymore. We have to be flexible. So the government of today is a government that is flexible and the employees that work with government have to be entrepreneurial. Government can't do everything. In fact, we have no choice in some ways but to do public-private partnerships uh, in order to create sustainable solutions. That the system that we develop now will be outdated in a couple of years, given the technological changes. So how do we think about a collaboration with the private sector where the private sector is incentivized to make those improvements? Um, how do we think about procurement in a different way? How do we think about revenue generation in a different way? So government is in some ways having to evolve and its employees are having to evolve and that means that we as public servants have no choice but to be problem solvers.